Hey guys, it's Adam and we're back here in the AeroWorks workshop. It's September 30th and we got to talk about something that happened yesterday in a video that I put out yesterday. Uh, building the doors here. I did make a mistake and I'm willing to admit it. So here's what happened. I showed on the plans, and I'll show that right now, where the plans showed A4 and A5 rivets. I got the lines mixed up. I shifted them up a little bit. And I took that to believe that the bottom row here was A5 countersunk and the top of the hinge was A4. It is not. They're both A5. And so I've got to replace these A4s with A5s. Now, I did talk to Zenith, talk to Roger. He said, it's probably fine. You don't have to replace them, but it's probably going to bug you. And yes, it would bug me as well as I'm sure other people would call me out on it. So that brings up the second question of what's going to happen when I drill these bits out and they fall down in this channel. Well, my plan is to basically just put a small little access hole on the inside of the channel right up here up on the inside of here. We'll put a little panel there and we'll suck all those bits out and we'll put A5s in there and we should be good to go. So guys, sorry about the confusion. I actually caught the uh, issue right after I posted the video. And at the same time, uh, one of the viewers, Jason Fish, called it out too. Great catch on that. And that's the kind of stuff we need in this community. People looking out for each other and people catching and or helping each other out with our builds. Again, first time builder, don't claim to be a professional, but doing the best I can, made some mistakes, but the nice thing with these aircraft is you can correct them. So also I do wanna show you uh, in the Zenith uh, building guide, there is a reference to the strength of an A4 and A5 rivet, which I'll show you here down below. So there is quite a difference. If it wasn't that much of a difference, I would have probably just left the A4s but I'm gonna do it right. I'm gonna put the A5s in there, so that's what I'll be working on today. So back at it, guys. Four more to go. All right, guys, I'm sure you're getting tired of looking at these door frames, so this will be the last time. But look here, A5s all replaced, back in business, door still works, all good. On to the next one. Well, guys, the UPS guy just stopped by, so let's get this opened up and see what we got. Well, hey guys, what we have here is a Super Duty fuel tank. Now, no, that's not what came in the box, but what I do want to show you is a couple things regarding to the fuel system. Now, what Zenith provides to you is a fuel cinder. Uh, actually, it's, the description is fuel cinder VW Beetle. So we can kind of get an idea where that technology came from. Uh, but the idea behind this is you put a couple bins in this toilet bowl float thing, you got to cut a whole big hole in the side of your tank. You got to put this in here and get it all calibrated up and everything like that. But we came up with was a better solution. And that was a product that uh, our engine manufacturer uh, create, created. And that is a fuel cinder unit, transducer type fuel cinder that is specifically made for this tank. Uh, as you can see by the length here and what you end up doing is they provide these really cool anodized uh, billet aluminum, I guess they're not anodized, but they're billet aluminum weld-in tank bungs. And basically all you're gonna do is weld this in to the top of the tank, and then you'll insert the fuel transducer in there, and you'll see here that it has screw holes on the top, and that seals with an O-ring. So if you ever got to replace those or get to it, you don't have to worry about fuel draining out the side and everything else. So that's a pretty cool setup. So we're going to have our tank sent out to our uh, local welder. He's about a block away from me and we'll get these welded in. The other cool thing you might notice is that it's recessed, right? So unlike some other top mounted ones where you have to build a, uh, a cap or, or shell for the transducer itself, these actually recess down and on a super duty wing you don't have to build any type of a uh, bump there they'll actually uh, be right below the skin so now if you do want to put an access hole obviously you could do that um, so what comes in their kit 
is two Weldon bungs. You can also have this done for you too. You could have these sent to Zenith and have Zenith put them in for you. Uh, or if you have your tanks already, you can have it done locally. But you get the screws, the hardware, the O-rings, and the two uh, fuel transducers. So we're going to be doing away with the old VW float style thing. And we're going to be doing everything more modernized on this aircraft. And that's why we went this route right here. Now the next thing I want to show you is our avionics bay trays. These are also made by Viking Aircraft. And they make a variety, they actually make two types. One with just perforated holes and one with larger holes. This is more for your engine uh, ECU piping and all that kind of stuff, your tubes and hoses. So you can do one of each or you can do either one you want, depending on what you have in your aircraft. I also picked up the uh, battery box holders. So those will go up here. So everything for the Viking engine will basically be mounted on these two plates here. So most of our circuit breakers will be laid out here, our starter solenoid batteries. On this side, we'll have our engine ECU as well as some of our avionics equipment mounted on top and below the two avionics trays. Now these weigh about a pound a piece, so you know, take that for what you will, but they are pre-made, you're done, there's no crafting, there's no manufacturing, uh, they're angled to fit the firewall, you basically drill up a couple holes, put some rivets in there and you're good to go. Um, the nice thing too is the trays just sit on here the way they are, so if you're kind of positioning things, you can take it out, drill things, bring it back, what have you, until you get it uh, to where you need to permanently install that. So that's a pretty cool uh, option with this. Again, Viking Aircraft provided both the trays as well as the fuel transducers, and I invite you to check them out. I'll put links down below. Whether you're building an aircraft with a Viking engine or not, these trays are kind of invaluable uh, if you don't want to you know, fabricate something from scratch. All right, guys, well, I've got a lot to get done this weekend. Uh, after making a bunch of mistakes on the first doors, uh, I think I've learned my lesson, and the second one should go a lot smoother, as does most things that you do the first time. Uh, the second one always goes a lot smoother. So we've got a lot of cool projects going on right now. We've got uh, the pilot side door to get done. We've got our avionics tray to get in there, and we're going to start laying out some of the components for the engine. I've been waiting and kind of holding off on sensors and all of that because they didn't have a place for anything to go. Now that we have the trays, now I can start bringing in the engine wiring, uh, possibly getting some of the uh, uh, radios and things mounted up, and work on getting my instrument panel, which is complete, mounted in the aircraft to start cross-connecting some wires. So guys, I appreciate you watching. I uh, hope you're gaining some value from the videos. If you are, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It's the biggest uh, compliment you can make on these videos. A lot of time goes into uh, every video that we put out and it really does help if you do uh, give a thumbs up on the videos. We know a lot of you thumbs up on the Facebook, but give them on the video as well. That really helps us out. Appreciate you guys watching. Again, guys, it's Adam and the Aeroworks Workshop and we'll see you on the next video.